So I have another eyeshadow palette review today. I picked up the Too Faced Pumpkin Spice Second Slice Eyeshadow Palette, and I'm smirking because I'm the first person to make fun of Too Faced for the various things that they do, the amount of times that they literally replicate their own palettes every single year. But joke's on me because I buy them every single year. <laughs> So Too Faced, I believe this is their holiday palette, though I can't be too sure. I just feel like, you know, they've already announced their holiday collection, but they always have like one key palette for the holiday season. And I think this is it. I think they tried to change it up. It's just weird timing because they literally just launched the Better Than Chocolate palette, which I kind of assumed was their holiday e palette. But alas, it is not, I guess. So anyways, I was a little extra curious about this palette because I did pick up the Better Than Chocolate palette and honestly, not the biggest fan of it. I thought the shadows were dry and really inconsistent. So I was like, well, let me let me try this. You can pick it up right now, I believe on Too Faced and I got mine from Ulta.com. It's $54, so she ain't cheap, I'm just saying. They tell you online that you need to sit back, relax and make room in your makeup bag because Too Faced is serving up seconds of their best-selling pumpkin pie inspired eyeshadow palette with pumpkin spice second slice. So it is actually the second version of the pumpkin spice palette, which legitimately, you guys, this is one of my favorite holiday palettes from them ever. And this one refreshed me to keep coming back for more because of how much I love this one. And I've got to say, looking at this compared to the new second slice palette, I mean, there is resemblance because all of Too Faced palettes look the same, but I feel like they took five steps forward with the pumpkin spice palette. And so they came out with a second edition because hey, everybody loved it and they just went back those five steps, but we'll get into it. <laughs> I'll do comparisons with all of the other palettes towards the end if you are curious, but we're gonna look at this palette itself today. I'm doing two looks. I already filmed one, so I kind of already have my thoughts, but let's get into the greater details, shall we? So here's what the palette comes in. What's different about it compared to the normal, I guess, in previous years palettes is that this one is cardboard. They normally come in this tin packaging for this holiday edition kind of packaging, so I think it cheapens it a little bit, but I also don't really care. You know, I'm not bothered by packaging like this. The palette itself is bulk made in the USA and then assembled in the Dominican Republic. And it has a undisclosed shelf life. Let me check the box. Oh, and I can't find the shelf life on here. It's probably like 12 months. That's normally what they are. And just in case you're wondering about products made in, the old pumpkin spice was also made in US, assembled in the DR. Lights are low. Let's take a look at the colors in here. I mean, all around, it is a beautiful, neutral fall palette. Leans warm, gonna be a great palette for the holidays, which is always the intention with these launches. You know, it's not a unique color story if you've been purchasing these palettes in the past or any kind of neutral palette, if we're being honest. Here's how we're looking. I mean, it's a pretty wearable palette with the exception of these two shades. Too Faced always has to have like two purple shades in here and then like a pop. So there always is gonna be a pop in their palettes. So you have that here. There is nothing different about this palette from the other palettes, you guys. I will talk my ish though because I still think it is very, very pretty. This palette also is supposed to be pie scented. It's very, very subtle. Too Faced has been doing that a lot recently in their scented palettes. Back in the day, their fragrance palettes were like overwhelming, but I liked it, you know? I really liked opening up the palette and smelling pumpkin. Very subtle this time around, which I think a lot of you will appreciate. Okay, let's get to swatching. I've swatched this palette. I can tell you, you guys, I'm happy with it. So I'm just gonna swatch down like this. So here are the four shades. Whip it good, squash it. See, they're good and toasted, nice. And sip, sip, hooray. These two are kind of close, no? Everything nice, second helping, crust issues. <laughs> I like that name and serving looks. The mattes are searching beautifully. Let's see. Scary Spiced Cutie Pie. This is like a satin shade. One more bite. And then this one's always interesting whenever they come out with the color fall feels. But honestly, when they've come out with this color in the past, it was normally pretty crumbly. This is an upgrade if you ask me. Okay, pick of the patch is my favorite looks wise. Uh, Swatch did not deliver though. That's actually pretty. 
Then we have sinful. Get back on there. So there is a powdery element, as you can see. Thankful which you'll see me apply in one of the tutorials. And this shade's interesting more, please. It's a very glittery, packed black, but you can see in the swatch, you lose a lot of the glitters. Last two shades, Spice Tacular and Eyes on the Pies. So here's the mix here. I like that there's a lot of mattes to work with here. There's a couple, like three or four key shimmers, a few satins. But overall, based on swatches, I think it's pretty exciting. They feel very good quality, definitely on the better side of Too Faced's quality. So I definitely have high hopes for this. You know, if you were debating between this and the Better Than Chocolate palette, I can tell you just by swatch, the Better Than Chocolate palette was disappointing to me. And while you can make it work, and if you like those brown tones better, absolutely. Like if you want to pick it up, it's not a bad palette. It's just not great. It's on the lower side of Too Faced's quality. The swatches on this are noticeably better. The formula itself just feels better. I think that this is a higher quality, generally speaking. So I'm going to go ahead and do a look and and I'll be back. Just to be clear, this is an unofficial tutorial. I'm not even putting lashes on. This is what I do just to test shadows. I'm gonna start off with everything nice right here, which is like a nice transition tone. It's gonna set the underbrow. It honestly is a little darker. So I wouldn't say that this is the best underbrow color for me, but it's fine. It has a hint of warmth, would be great if you have like medium skin tone. And we're, I wanted to play with the purples because in previous Too Faced palettes, they are the worst. <laughs> so I'm gonna go ahead and start off with Scary Spice right here, which is kind of like a neutral plum. And this is going to be the transition tone, just like this, blend her out. Didn't have an issue with that shade. And then we have to go into Thankful right here. Like these two are in so many <laughs> uh, Too Faced palettes, but Thankful is gonna go in the inner half of the crease. And it's not as vibrant as it looks in the pan, which for me is not a bad thing because I feel like it's more muted and wearable, but it just depends what angle you are going for, you know? What's your taste in makeup? And then I'm gonna carry that along the lower lash line as well. And then I'm gonna use Spice Tacular right here, which is a deeper shade. Make sure you know, since it has that plummy base, that it's not going to be splotchy or difficult to blend. And honestly, it's not. Just based on what I did with the other eye, I thought it was a good shade. I find that the mattes aren't running super duper deep, but I really don't mind it because they're blending out very, very nice and they can be built up. That being said though, they're still quite pigmented as Too Faced normally is. Okay, and then I'm gonna go into Fall Feels, which is a dark shimmery purple that is usually very messy, but it's really not in this case. A lot of times in the past, shades like this have literally crumbled and make the biggest mess. Look at that. That's actually really nice. Oddly enough, I really like this palette so far. I find it interesting that the chocolate bar palette just came out, the Better Than Chocolate, and I really didn't like the quality of it, and it was in the packaging that's normally very good. But this is in cardboard packaging, which normally is not as good, but it's working really good. I'm using a refer brush and I'm gonna start off with Squash It right here, which is the shimmer shape. So this shade I noticed, while I am applying it with a brush, if you're gonna use it with a brush, I recommend using a wet brush. Mine is dry, but I kind of dug in there, so it's still nice. It's a good shimmer. Flipping my brush, we're gonna go into one more bite. Beautiful. And then the final thing that I had to play around with was this black with so many glitters. More, please. And I wanted to use it as a liner. Now, I am using a dry brush. Just don't want to make a mess. It's not the blackest black, but it doesn't look like the blackest black in the pan either. So I don't think that's what they're going for here. And you can kind of see the glitters, but it's not not obnoxious. Like I said, I know this look isn't the cutest, but I just wanted to play with some shades before I did my actual makeup for today. First look, so far so good. Let's get on to the second one. 
All right, look number two. This is the look that I'm wearing out today. So I wanted to use my favorite shades and things that I thought would look great. And we have a really beautiful fall look. So I'm going to go ahead and start off with Sip Sip Hooray right here. This is going to go ahead and be my transition color. Now with most of these mattes, they do have a little bit of kick up, but it's not anything alarming whatsoever. Literally just tap off your brush and you will be good. The shimmers will create a little bit of mess, but again, nothing crazy. So that's just a beautiful transition shade to kind of add that initial depth to the look. Hopping into crust issues right here. I wanted to see the brightness level here with this shade and you can see it's quite pigmented it looks like it does in the pan in the first look i felt like the purples didn't quite look on the lid what they did in the pan but when we get more to the warmer shades they definitely do i just think Too faced isn't the greatest at creating purple shades but the neutrals i mean these are great so this is a halo eye if you couldn't tell already and then we're gonna go into a second helping right here and this i just wanted to make sure this looked different from crust issues and it definitely does and it has a lot of brightness and i didn't have any issues in the first look but my experience is even better in the second look like i like this palette and then adding depth we're going into eyes on the pies then just make sure all of the edges are blended out it's actually a good idea to take that very first brush that we used and diffuse everything. But do you see how easy this blend is going? And then I'm going to take the teeniest, tiniest little bit of more, please. I wasn't going to use this because I used it in the first look, but I just felt like we needed that little bit of oomph, that little bit of depth. And the glitters really aren't even showing up in this look because I took such a tiny bit. And it's not the blackest black as I stated before, but it's really great for this little bit of deepening then blend it out make it nice and smooth with a refer brush going into cutie pie i wanted to test this because it was one of the least metallic shades in the palette but it definitely is still quite shimmery and it's applying really smooth and a shade like this is good because you're not going to get much fallout from it so it's going to be pretty mess free. I don't need to press too hard in the palette either to get it to show up. So this is a nice shade, even nicer than I had anticipated. And then finally, I really wanted to try Whip It Good. So we're going to go ahead and use that. And that's just going to be popped in the center right here. Again, not messy. Added that brightness to the center of the eye. This look is so good. Okay, <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and finish up and I'll be right back. Here's how the makeup's looking. It's looking really good. If you're curious about anything else that I'm wearing, it'll be linked down below. But I wanted to show you how this palette compares to the other Too Faced palettes. So I'm going to start off with the original pumpkin palette that this palette is supposed to be inspired from. Honestly, this is the pumpkin palette. What made this palette different at the time was it was not quite as brown and warm as the previous Too Faced holiday palettes. It was a little bit more spunky, it had more character to it, but it still was like neutral. It was my favorite holiday palette that they launched. Here's the second slice palette. I just feel like they did the same thing that they had before this palette. So everything that we loved about the Pumpkin Spice palette went away with the second one. Like I said, it took five steps back. So just keep that in mind. You can see PS and Chill with the original Pumpkin Spice. We have Thankful that's really close. Lots of the oranges. The mattes are pretty much the same. You just have prettier colors really in the Pumpkin Spice. So if you can get your hands on the original Pumpkin Spice, I'd recommend it. It's like, if you have the Pumpkin Spice, do you need the second slice? <laughs> I really liked how that sounded. I think it's a good palette. The quality is very, very nice. And it's a bit different from the original Pumpkin Spice, but they're still very close. This is just warmer. Now, the thing with these is they all look the same. I don't even know what came out when. But here is the Cinnamon Roll palette. And here is the Upside Down Pumpkin Second Slice palette. These look super similar, right? You have the two key purples. Take a look, the two key purples. Once again, also in this new palette, the shimmers are pretty much the same. There's just a lighter pink. Overall, the cinnamon is a bit lighter, but you definitely don't need both. Gingerbread Spice Palette. We're getting a little older here. But if you have them, this one has a little bit more pops of purples. The shimmers in the gingerbread is a little prettier, but I prefer the gingerbread color store. Okay, and then the last one that I have is extra spicy gingerbread. So here's extra spicy gingerbread. I mean, and this one also is quite similar. I think these two might be the most similar in that they just contain so many warm palettes. They both lean quite warm. That 
extra spicy gingerbread palette does not have the purpley shades, but they have every other shade pretty much. So if you have any of the previous palettes, you don't need this one, but if you are interested like I am and pick them up every year. I'm happy to announce though, I really do enjoy the quality of this. I think overall it is a very nice palette. It's better than the Better Than Chocolate palette, which makes me mad because why is Too Faced's quality just so inconsistent? Why was that Better Than Chocolate, which they made a big deal out of, not good quality? But this one is good. So anyways, that is why I do continue to review Too Faced palettes to let you know what's up because they can't, they can't get consistency down. So if you were interested in this, it's a good one. And it also makes a really great gift if you, the makeup watcher, have a lot of makeup. Maybe get that for somebody who doesn't have so much makeup. So I hope you guys enjoyed this review and the tutorials. Let me know your thoughts on this palette down below. Are you a sucker like me? Do you purchase these every year? And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye guys, have a good one.